follow the Constitution. The president will just sign that as he wishes. But understand what's behind this and look at, in Paris, where this conference is going to be, they have the top French meteorologist uh, has now been fired because he debunked climate hysteria. This, of course, is uh, weatherman Philippe Verdier. He's the state-funded broadcasting giant France's television's main meteorologist. He says that they've been taken hostage by misleading data that's peddled by politicians and climatologists. In response, when he said this, his employer, the French government essentially, promptly took him off the air because he's a heretic to their religion. They put him on a forced holiday, essentially proving his point. Now, he is the chief of meteorology. He is the nation's foremost weatherman. He is called in France, Mr. Weatherman. He compares the climate juggernaut to a quote-unquote war machine that needs to keep the populist in constant terror in order to advance its objectives. He says, we are hostage to a planetary scandal over climate change, a war machine whose aim is to keep us in fear, fear and uncertainty. Do you remember the first, the uh, most recent GOP debate where Jake Tapper comes to the uh, uh, GOP candidates and says, don't you think even as insurance, even if you don't believe this, we should do this as insurance? You know, it, we're not certain about this, but we should do it anyway. Aren't you afraid? Don't you think we should move with this? And of course, they point out in this article from New American, they say that the uh, French prime minister had called together meteorologists in France and told them that they needed to push this agenda of global warming. French foreign minister Laurent Fabius called a meeting with French weathermen in the media last year. The socialist politician demanded meteorologists frighten their audiences with threat of climate chaos in their weather forecasts. And this fellow who was the Mr. Weatherman, the head of the uh, French weather agency, said, I was horrified by this. He said shortly after the socialist foreign minister appeared on the cover of another magazine posing as a weatherman and said that there was 500 days to save the planet. He says, well, if the minister decides that he is Mr. Weatherman, then the real Mr. Weatherman can also express himself on the subject in a lucid manner. What is shameful is the pressure that is placed on us to say that if we don't hurry, it'll be an apocalypse. Stay with us. We'll be right back talking about the release and in drone information, classified documents. President. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life vitamin B12 formulation. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade, bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. I'm running for president. Everyday Americans need a champion, and I want to be that champion. I'm hitting the road to earn your vote, and I hope you'll join me on this journey. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives 
gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. Today, there was a new leak of classified documents, this time about the American drone program, or more clearly, the American assassination program. This is done by the same people that uh, leaked the Ed Snowden documents, Gwen Greenwald and those at The Intercept. We'll talk about that in a moment. But first, I want to give you this story from Popular Science that I think is an allegory about how rapidly technology can change in our society. and change things into a world that we don't really realize, with dangers that we've never seen before. Tesla cars last night became autonomous overnight. And as popular science puts it, the rise of the machines has begun, fittingly via an overnight wireless global awakening. They say owners of Tesla Model S and Model X electric cars woke up today to cars that were suddenly empowered to drive themselves down the road, simply with a software update. And of course, they were able to do this because they had already pre-positioned the hardware into the vehicle. For example, they've got forward radar, they've got forward-looking cameras, they've got long-range ultrasonic sensors, braking and steering controls, so in the, all they have to do is just change the software, and it's ready to go into autonomous mode. They say, because the software is still at an early stage, it's important that people exercise caution, but in the long term, drivers will not need to keep their hands on the wheel. Eventually, there won't be steering wheels or pedals. Isn't that exciting? Well, quite frankly, I'm not interested in a car like that. Even though it can change lanes, even though it can self-park, even though it can brake and stop automatically and it can accelerate automatically when people get out of their way in the lanes, this is how quickly things can change. And of course, we've talked many times about the dangers of autonomous driving, driven cars. Uh, the dangers, of course, are obvious in terms of software malfunctions or hardware malfunctions where you don't have any control, where you've lost the steering wheel, where you've lost the brakes, where you become totally dependent on the technology. But it also allows the government to exercise a control grid. And one of the things that they mention in this Tesla article, they say another distinction from other semi-autonomous systems is that the Tesla cars will collect data about their use in order to refine and enhance the system, and also to share that information with the government, of course. And so that brings us to where we are with the information about drones. We know that drones have been used as assassination vehicles. We know that they've used them to kill American citizens without due process in other countries. And we've asked the question, how long will it be before the president can set up a drone kill list and execute people that he doesn't like in America? Because in principle, nothing has essentially changed in that. Now, this new leak is something that was hinted at in the film documentary Citizen Four. They say that uh, in the film, Citizen Four, at one point, Greenwald shows Snowden a diagram of the authorization chain for drone strikes that ends with the president, one that looks very similar to the one that was included in today's publication. There were slides that were leaked in this. And the person who leaked this information, I think, had a very important message. He says, this outrageous explosion of watch listing, of monitoring people, of racking and stacking them into lists, of assigning them numbers, assigning them quote-unquote baseball cards, assigning them numbers 
uh, their death sentences without notice on a worldwide battlefield. It was from the very first instance wrong, he says. We're allowing this to happen. And by we, I mean every American citizen who has access to this information now, but continues to do nothing about it. That's exactly right. We've had situations in the past where we've been told about this. We've been told about what's going on with the NSA. What's been done about that? A lot of us are upset about it. A few uh, politicians like uh, Rand Paul have introduced bills to try to stop this, but the vast majority of politicians don't want anything done about it. The vast majority of Americans are okay being spied upon continuously because they don't value liberty. They don't understand the danger of a government that knows everything about you, that distrusts you, that paints you as a threat to the government. That is incredibly dangerous. And of course, we've seen politicians at high levels being blackmailed with this information. Now, of course, what is the, re the reaction of the press? A good example of this is the Daily Mail. The way they react to this is the way that we've seen the press react to the leaks that we got from Snowden or the information that we got from Manning and WikiLeaks about criminal action from the government. Instead of going after the government, instead of criticizing the government, of course, they go after the person who leaked the information. And that's what we see in this headline from the Daily Mail. They say, U.S. spy chiefs are hunting the new Snowden. Whistleblower leaks top secret drone assassination program that reveals how 90% of the people killed in a one five-month spree weren't targeted. In other words, this is what they used to call collateral damage. But that's not a problem, is it? The problem is that the information got out. The problem isn't that we're murdering people indiscriminately, that we're just doing this by executive order. No, that's not the problem. The problem is that the information got out. And of course, when they talk about this, we've had all these different euphemisms that they use, targeted killings, we call the uh, list, they've, they've uh, called that the disposition matrix. All of that doesn't take away from what is essentially the issue here. And that is that we have a government that is using assassination as their policy. They say at the beginning of the article, drones are simply a tool. The policy is assassination. And I'm reminded that years and years ago in the church committee hearings, the nation and the world were appalled when William Colby, the then director of the CIA, was honest and candid and said as he held up guns, these are assassination guns. We can shoot people, the bullets dissolve, and you don't know who we've killed. And yet we have come to accept this as normal, as acceptable. And you have to ask yourself, who watches the watchers? These are the people who we have hired supposedly to protect us and to make us safe, who keeps us safe from them when they go off the rails? What happens when their geospatial intelligence programs and their minority report software tags somebody who really isn't a threat, when we get a false positive on that? And that's where we're going. This article doesn't really talk about the current technology. It doesn't really even talk about the future technology, the near future technology that may be ready to be deployed at this point. We know from the author, who uh, Ann Jacobson, who wrote The Pentagon's Brain, exposing the history of DARPA, we know that they had drone programs back in Vietnam. We know that Operation Northwoods, they were talking about remote-controlled civilian airliners that they would fly into buildings so they could blame it on the Cubans, not Al-Qaeda, not Osama bin Laden, but the Cubans at the time, so they could have an, a, an excuse to invade Cuba. This has been around a very long time. They keep technology on hold for a very long time, and we've had glimpses of what is in the near future. And of course, when you look at a, at a Pentagon mindset that wants to do remote control killing, you have to keep this in mind with the robots that DARPA is developing. The fact that they want to have killing machines that they can operate from a distance that perhaps will be autonomous. This is the new Terminator future that they're planning for us. They already have much of the technology in place, and that is what's very concerning about this. Not only that they would have uh, this program where the president uh, sets up his list, but what is coming next? And we've talked about this earlier this week. It was just within the last uh, week or so that DARPA came out with a drone program uh, saying that they want to have a system called Icarus that will essentially dissolve the drone, just as we have William Colby talking about how he has assassination bullets that dissolve so we don't know who they've assassinated. Well, now they can have drones that disappear after they've killed innocent people because 90% plus of the people that they're killing are innocent people. All that does is harm our effort, our war effort, but it is a shedding of innocent blood. 
and it is an authoritarian assassination policy. Should we be concerned? Look at this 